So this will be the last one of the year, all right? Um, now, I thought I would dedicate a little bit of time to sequences. Um, sequences are mathematical equations that will help develop your technique. And rather than just giving an overview of all of them, I thought I would take them one at a time. And so today we're going to be working on thirds. Now, sometimes students don't want to play sequences. They say, I don't want to sound like a computer or it's like it's too mathematical and I don't want to be a machine. But I don't really agree with that way of thinking, you know. I'm telling you because if you practice these sequences, first of all, you're going to develop good technique. And because they're predetermined mathematical, math, mathematical equations, you're going to run into like problems, like sort of fingering problems or technique problems. And you have to, by practicing sequences, you learn to overcome those obstacles. And it allows you to develop a technique that you can really play anything you want. So the trick is you learn them, master them, and then just forget them and watch how they show up in your playing. You know, okay, so um, today we're starting with thirds. Now, there's different ways to think about it. Uh, today we're working on what I call a group of three sequence, right? And um, what that means is we're gonna play three notes at a time. And there's other ones too, there's like intervallic thirds. And there's also really a lot of different variations and they all have different challenges. And so I'm gonna do one at a time and you're gonna work on them, one of them for a week, you're gonna master it and then move on to the next one. And you know, don't forget the last ones either. You're gonna keep using those two and working on those two. But uh, let's just take these one at a time. So the first one today, we're playing the C major scale, okay? Now I'm gonna start from the lowest note. And we're gonna play over a D minor chord, not a C major chord. It's gonna be like a Dorian sound, but it could be anything. Now the tempo, let me look here. Tempo is 110, that's important to keep in mind. We're gonna play 16th notes. And um, this, knowing this information, of course you can download the track at 110, and it gives you, it allows you to know if you're making progress, okay? And uh, so it's a group of three sequence, and this is what it is. We're gonna go from the lowest note and play, just play the notes three at a time. One, two, three. Next note. Next note. But we're not gonna stop, we're gonna go like this. Now here's the problem. When we play groups of three se uh, sequences, we wanna play them like triplets really, cause it's, it's in three, it's three, three notes at a time. So it feels better in triplets, but we're playing a 16th note. So it, it's challenging because it discombobulates your mind <laughs> when you do it, right? So um, let's try it. Now when you practice these, you can, you can really, work on as much detail as you want. Like if you if you have bad alternate picking, do it using alternate picking. I tend to not worry so much about that. Maybe I should. Um, I'm more of a legato type of player. I don't play, pick every note. I sort of like the way that it, the dynamics, dynamics change and the rhythm sort of changes a little bit when you use legato, right? So, but that's just my personal taste. Whatever, however you want to do it is your own beeswax, okay? So look, I'm going to go like this. And then the other way. Okay, but remember, you practice it to the track because you want to be able to lock it in. And you'll know when it's working. Um, am I great at all, all these sequences? Definitely not. Definitely not. I'm a student myself in certain respects, even though I've been playing guitar for a long time. So I'm just going to put on the track and we're going to do it. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention is that there's different ways to time it. So I'm going to try to play it so this D note lands on one. So what does that mean? One E and the two E and the three E and the four E 
and a one, okay. And next, descending. And so descending is kind of the same thing. I'm gonna to try to get this note on one, so four E and and the one. Next, I'm going to um, mix them up. So, and then, you know, <clears throat> when you feel like you have these under your fingers, I'm not really perfect at these yet. These have, aren't really super natural for me either. But at one point, you want to try to see if you can get them into your playing naturally. So um, I'm going to try to do that. We'll see if it works or not. So stay tuned. Um, these are going to get more and more interesting, and this is just the first step. So I suggest you do a little bit every day, even if you're experienced. You know, uh, 15 minutes a day makes a big difference in your technique, okay? And of course, move to different scales, and you'll find out that there's all sorts of um, technical 
roadblocks that pop up when you do this. And fixing those roadblocks is what's going to make you a much more technically proficient player. All right. So once again, it's going to be New Year's. So happy New Year's. And I hope this is going to be a great guitar playing year for you. And um, everything goes exactly like you hope for the next year. All right. So um, I'll see you next time.